Today, it's Edwin's Monday Evening Property Rant. Well, here we are, folks. It's the first of the International Property Rant shows with Edwin Almeida. Hi, Edwin. How are you doing? Martin, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, you sneaky bastard. You know, you told me you're going there for other reasons, but you know, Dusty tells me you're really there to party with uh, Rishni Shinak, whatever your Prime Minister's name is. <laughs> is that true? Like, no, what's the go? no, 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 no. It's not, not true. Um, I am in Bath. Um, on a very, very thin internet connection with no gear and no ability to do anything really other than just uh, make a basic Zoom call. But uh, anyway, I've got a, got a microphone, I've got a camera, got a light. So yeah, it's all good. <laughs> that's, well, that's the main thing. As long as yeah. you've got a camera and you've got some lights yep. and as long as you're not sleeping in a tent, because they tell me the, uh, the, the rental market there is uh, diabolical, just as bad as what it is here in Australia. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, I, but I did a your... show. I did a show yesterday on that actually, and I see you. You know, you've put it in the show notes. We might talk about it some more. It's really, it's really horrendous what's going on over here. The parallels between the UK and Australia in terms of the property sector are horrendous. They're so close. So the same sorts of issues. Um, you know, poor construction, a rental sector, all over the place. Affordability shot to pieces. Um, quality of um, recent uh, developments. You know, same problem with lack of good materials, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, um, you know, anybody who thinks that Australia has a unique problem with property. Uh, no, no, no. We have a very similar set of issues over here in the UK. I suspect other countries too. So there is something fundamentally structurally wrong with the way that the property market's working. Well, the thing, the difference being, though, Martin, is correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, not, not only from what that article said, but uh, I also heard it from a couple of other clients uh, that uh, have uh, subsequently moved over to to Australia and we've uh, assisted them with um, uh, buying a property. And they've been trying to sell the properties, there, their properties there in England, mm. but they've, um, they've been advised not to sell because they've dropped in value that much that they're basically not going to make a quid uh, from when they bought. However, the... the, the um, rental revenue has increased by something like 27 percent so i mean it's not uh, i guess it's not what we're really uh, there's a, there are a lot of parallels so, so many people coming in and where where are they coming from is the your migration policy just as just as bad as uh, as our one is is is, yeah. is that what's driving the rental market but you would think you would think on the on the other hand you would also get a, um, uh, a, a yeah, property values increasing, but like they are here, going stupidly in the uh, in the um, particularly in Sydney. Well, um, property prices are going sideways or down here, um, and it varies, of course, by location and type of property. Migration is very strong, absolutely, um, but there are some strong regional differences too. So a lot of the demand for properties in the southeast, around near London, right. and that's where the rental crisis is absolutely chronic. Um, people are having to spend a lot more than they would have expected to spend just to get anything. Um, so it's a big issue. Uh, lack of supply, of course, but they've also done a few things here to restrict the supply of investment properties. So, for example, they've reduced the negative gearing equivalents here. And uh, it, it means that, in fact, quite a few people are now taking property off the market from a rental perspective and are actually putting on the market to sell. Uh, and so there is some transaction throughput, but again, volumes are down, listings are down. Uh, uh, the quality product, the, product, the quality um, properties are not really on the market now. So a lot of the stuff that's on the market is stuff that's been around for quite some time. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? So there are quite a lot of, you know, I think similarities, but a few differences too. Yeah, I, I think that's really, really interesting <clears throat> that uh, negative gearing is off the table. Uh, they're, they're in England, and that's creating a uh, shortage in uh, in the rental yep. in the rental arena because the uh, it's going to the other to the other ledger, which is your sales, uh, and therefore driving the prices down. Oh, lo and mm -hmm. behold, uh, you know, um, anybody wonders why 
negative gearing isn't taken off the table here, not, not by the libs or not by the labs. But uh, hold on a minute. I think you and I spoke about this. Uh, somebody owns a lot of investment properties. Uh, yeah, politicians. That's right. Yeah, exactly right. Well, there's a whole bunch of reasons why, you know, there are some changes here. But yeah, they did try and um, rebalance. And of course, they've got um, equity share schemes and, you know, first home buyer schemes that have been well, marginally successful. But of course, when property prices start to slide, then of course, first time buyers also lose some of the um, the share of the property. So yeah, it's 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 tricky. I must say, it's very tricky. Now you sent oh, through. Take, go on. Take me back to 2015, 2016, Martin. Yeah. Where things were a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The politicians we, were telling us if we couldn't afford properties, uh, you know, uh, we wouldn't be buying them. And uh, we, we were only talking about. Uh, uh, not only we're talking about uh, 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 pet bonds, but we're also talking potentially about uh, bonds for kids. You know, <laughs> take me back to twenty to to the good old easy days, Martin. I know, I know. When it when property was king, eh? Well, we'll see. Now you sent through some very interesting updates. We might go through them quite quickly. We should explain that uh, this is a you know a dodgy line, so we might not go for a full hour today, but we'll we'll try and cover a few things off quickly. And the first thing you talked about were, were pet bonds and the fact that, <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you believe it? Uh, look, that, that were the similarities, I mean, that, that, that's happening in England as well. So, yep. uh, you know, it, um, it, it's here. And you and I, you and I spoke about this uh, months ago, the, the issues that were, were going to be faced. We were already facing these uh, a while back. Uh, it was only going to be a, um, uh, we, we were talking about how pets became, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, we couldn't get a cat. I mean, Dusty and Evan, we, we were trying to get cats at the time when we, during the lockdowns and we, we, we were trying for months. Uh, you know, we were prepared to travel uh, as far as Coffs Harbour at one stage to, to pick up some, uh, uh, some uh, you know, uh, cats uh, back then. And uh, you know, all, what, what happened was one of our friends, uh, one of the stray cats in the neighbourhood had a litter and we were able to get uh, Dusty and Evan. But, uh, post uh, lockdowns, we end up with a with a lot of um, uh, a lot of pets, and we started discussing the issues around uh, around families move around. And as the the rental numbers that you and I were tracking for a long time, a lot longer than uh, than the mainstream media are tracking them uh, so closely now, mm -hmm. because it was very we knew we were going to get here, we knew it was going to come uh, even before the, uh, the, the the federal election, and here we are. And looks like you're facing the same issues there in London uh, as as we are here, where basically if you've got a if you've got a pet, you, you go to the bottom of the pile, uh, or you've got to come up with some some you know, good reasons. Look, you, you, know, need, you need you need you need a you need a pet CV, right? And and <laughs> including in that CV is the fact that the pet has been quote professionally house trained. That's what you need. Yeah. Pro uh, <laughs> Professionally house trained, my God, seriously. <laughs> uh, as I said, look, I, as, as I put out an article back then in uh, 2015 uh, with uh, you know, a, uh, uh, an opinion piece, but it was more in jest uh, with uh, with one of the reporters. Uh, we put it out, and 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 I and I made a point, and and I said, uh, I, I really be, I really believe that. Uh, well, two two things. One was in jest. Well, well, I was pointing out that in in the um, in the property management uh, portfolio that we were looking after at that time, uh, a, a good portion, 30, 40% of, of those uh, uh, rentals were, were pet friendly rentals. And we encouraged our landlords to, to consider people with pets because a lot of the rentals were in the inner west and, and it was very hard for a lot of people that, uh, you know, to, to accommodate the, um, the, the, the little friends. So uh, I brought out and uh, in ingest, I said, uh, yeah, maybe we do need, um, uh, yeah, I, I take issue with um, with with families with little kids uh, because they're more troublesome, and obviously I've got taken to task. But the point the point that I was making uh, in the the underlying issue is, you know, um, the that the that that the tenants with pets uh, get blamed for for issues when it's actually when in actual fact it's the property management teams that really let things down. They really don't. Uh, that they don't attend to issues. They don't really uh, uh, help and assist uh, people uh, in the way that they should, and therefore a lot of these rental managements uh, go go pear shaped. Uh, sooner than later, we're going to have a further issue, Martin, with uh, new legislation coming in uh, around the 
the, the you know uh, a certain level of standard of, of housing as they as they have in Melbourne and uh, uh, soon to be introduced in Queensland. New South Wales is going to go down that path, and I dare say that thirty another thirty percent of homes uh, properties in New South Wales will not comply with the minimum standard uh, for you know, for for it to be deemed as a rental accommodation. So it's a further strain. So in all this, the people that lose out, the people that are being uh, being um, uh, sidelined uh, uh, people with uh, with you know uh, little friends, uh, and also um, you know uh, the the other you know a, a, a greater issue is uh, single parents as well. It's crazy, and and but the the article the article that uh, 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 that points out some of the some of the things there that uh, you guys can demand of uh, of tenants is just it's the wild west. It's the it's crazy. Some agents or landlords want a pet CV with evidence of an animal has been professionally house trained. I, th I thought that was okay. That's fair enough. But some landlords require an annual salary thirty times the monthly rent, but also information on livestock and domestic habits. Martin, <laughs> you know what? What does that all mean? It means that uh, you have to jump through a billion hoops if you want to get anywhere, basically, and uh, particularly if you have pets. So, you know, as we said earlier, it's a it's it's a big, it's a big big deal. And what about these properties down in uh, Australia? You know, fibre houses stand the tests of floods and strong winds, and well, maybe maybe not, me. Eh? Well, look, the thing is, the thing is, the that that was uh, I put that tweet out. Uh, I put that tweet out uh, because of the, um, the 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 what happened uh, uh, over the you know uh, just a, uh, under a week ago where we got this uh, this new uh, new dwelling that in Condor Park that had come down, which we're going to talk about in more uh, detail later on. So uh, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll be a bit of a smart ass and, and I'll and I'll put out uh, a, a tweet uh, as uh, you yeah, know breaking news. Uh, Fibro House stands at the, the, the test of time. Uh, a Fibro House in Condor Park that just sold last week for $1.2 million. And uh, you know, but it's still there. It was built in uh, in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, it's probably gone through, uh, you know, uh, it was in a bit of a low area, low lane area. So probably gone through floods. Uh, you know, uh, stood the test of um, strong winds and hail and it's still there. But yet a house around the corner from this one that had just been sold uh, has collapsed, Martin. And that's the that's the state of construction at the moment. But again, you and I spoke about the issues uh, that, uh, that that many uh, yeah, the building industry was going to face or people that were chasing the, the new shiny uh, yeah, new dwellings, uh, paying big dollars uh, for for these new homes. But you and I said and have been saying for for uh, you know, from last year, if not the year before as well, that uh, as as construction costs go up in value, as uh, we have you know uh, the construction uh, the, the material costs go up because of supply chain issues, the the developers and the builders were going to start uh, cutting corners, and and lo and behold, uh, they have. And the, the videos that I sent you, uh, the videos that I took of um, of of what was going on in the in that particular house that had uh, collapsed that. Um, in Condor Park, and it's evident from the from the first video there uh, that uh, you can see where the 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 sea channel beam there was resting on uh, on you know a single skin uh, brick wall. I mean, there was so much failure. In look, in um, in general speak, there was almost ten tons of building uh, resting on, on that beam on that on a single skin wall, and the footings just um, uh, failed as well. Mm. So there were a lot of issues. So it's interesting. You can see, and I try to make a commentary on the on the videos as I put them out. But it, it just goes to show that um, uh, the, the the lack of policing, no matter what uh, legislation, no matter what uh, controls, no matter what the governments bring in, unless you've got a, unless you're going to have a very strong, um, uh, you know, uh, policing body, it, it's nothing's going to change. Mark, things are only going to get worse. Yep. Yep. No, absolutely. And it's uh, similar here, by the way. And of course, the other thing that we're seeing are more um, failures of uh, building firms. So uh, Porter Davis being uh, one of the uh, most significant. And there was a, an attempted bid 
by somebody else to um, take it over, but I think that bid has been um, rejected now. Um, but, you know, this is the continuing litany, isn't it, of, of failed builders. And I just wonder how many people are sitting with um, half finished or not even started properties and uh, no prospect of getting them done anytime soon. I mean, this is a really, really big deal, isn't it? Oh, look, it is. Uh, uh, some of the WeChat chatters in the investment groups, they had actually bought in uh, to uh, to um, some of these uh, Port of Davis developments down, yeah. in, down in Melbourne. So what happened was, well, um, Dusty was reading uh, last week that, uh, you know, in, in the morning they they got, um, you know, um, in the day when all this, when all this went pear-shaped and it became mainstream media, uh, they got told, uh, oh, you know, uh, we're, we're going to basically take your first deposit and some of the WeChat chatters, these investors were actually, you know, um, okay. The company well uh, with the with, you know, the, the the release of the uh, the first lot, lot of funds for the construction to uh, to commence. Mm. So basically, what it meant was they were saying, "Listen, we're going to put a we're going to put a shovel to the ground there in uh, in your development. We're going to start building. So we'll start. We'll, we'll take the first payment, uh, the progressive payment, uh, the initial payment, and um, you know, and you know, we'll, we'll report to you um, uh, as things go on. This is on the day that then the news broke. That basically the liquidators had moved in, right? So then, in the the same day, they get they get uh, emails saying, "Oh, look, due, due to financial issues and concerns, blah blah blah, uh, we're we're going to be unable to progress." This is this is the shit that went on um, w w with this, um, you know, with uh, Porter Davis. And again, these are allegations that the WeChat chatter is making. And and and, and the, the big ch uh, the big chat since then across the WeChat chatter uh, investment groups is basically stay away, stay clear of uh, any new dwellings, any new buildings, uh, anything that, uh, you know, that, that's been built within the last, particularly within the last three years. So what we're going to have, Martin, here in Sydney, uh, in the most part, I mean, some are chasing properties in, in, in Brisbane and uh, we, 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 don't, we don't look at the WeChat chatter as of, uh, what they're doing in Melbourne as much other than the ones that are reporting you know, as to what they're doing here in Sydney and some have connections there in Melbourne. But here in, in Sydney, Martin, the focus is on established properties. And the focus has become more on established properties for that simple reason that you and I, again, have been talking about for, for, for the last three years. And that is keeping a close eye on the for sale listings and what it means uh, you know, at grassroots levels and, and how the dynamics, uh, you know, shift and change as as numbers go up and down, um, you know, uh, even outside of all the economic factors uh, around. So at the moment, you know, the WeChat charters are, are hunting hard for the established homes, which means, guess what? With the with with, with you know, in certain suburbs, with the numbers dropping uh, like a Led Zeppelin, it's um, you know, the, we we we're seeing. Um, People going toe to toe with which are chatterers on the uh, on the days of auctions, and there are some silly numbers achieved. Uh, but little did these people realise is that the 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 which are chatterers, what they do and how they present those properties to the rental arena is not through your normal channels. As mm. again, yep. I, I've spoken about, which yep. is yeah, which is which is scary, scary uh, with the prices that are being achieved in some of these uh, in some of these suburbs. Um, and uh, achieved it by way of uh, sale, and it's scary because what I'm seeing, Martin, is um, is is a very very strong shift in the you know, movement of uh, private uh, private weddings, uh, and you know the reason why. It all comes back to to immigration and the the uh, the, uh, uh, the the student numbers swelling up again, and uh, the other uh, uh, Asian student numbers sw swelling up, and also. The migration from from other parts of the world, predominantly India, Malaysia, and uh, South Korea. Absolutely. Well, we've discussed that quite a few times, of course, and the migration factors. And let's go on to the numbers, though. You you mentioned them, and in fact, um, the Sydney numbers. Well, sixteen seven five seven on the twenty seventh, and um, <clears throat> on the tenth of the fourth, fifteen nine three zero. So they're dropping. They, they are Martin. That they, they are. They're dropping. They, they, they are dropping a lot. Uh, and then when you look at the the you know what we keep a very uh, a closer eye on is obviously the freestanding home uh, side of things because that is where we, we see a lot of the, uh, the, the 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 emotion play out which you and I uh, talk about 
a lot in our in our rants. It's yep. interesting how that plays out, and that's obviously where the mainstream media also pick up a lot of their stories uh, because of the, the the crazy stuff that goes on. Yeah, but it's and you're it's saying, one of those things. And you're saying so, it's going to go on drying up, right? So uh, as we go into the winter. Um, you know, you'd expect listings to go further. First time buyers, of course, are pulling out the market completely. The latest m- numbers from the AD- ABS so that almost no first time buyers can, can get in. Um, I mean, it's it, it's pretty chronic. And that, of course, explains why in some cases then property prices are on the rise, because if there are properties that are reasonable, then people are going to pay for them. So it, it just shows you that the whole thing is out of kilter. Look, it, it does. Uh, another factor that I that I think is going to happen, look, uh, there's obviously a lot more demand in 20, uh, 2021, 2022 winter periods, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what uh, that's what we see on the ground. Uh, even uh, Catherine Cashmore is reporting that as to what she's seeing on the ground there in uh, in Melbourne. Mm. Now, but there's also uh, apart from uh, what you know spoke about the 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 multi generational um, yeah dwellings or, or potential you know, dwellings that, that could accommodate multi-generational families mm. uh they, they, they've fetched a really good you know a, a very strong price and and it's you know gone well over uh reserves and and particularly guides um even outside of the underquoting side of things but what what i believe is we're going to see a lot more of martin is uh particularly over the next three months uh uh, is we're going to see the season, seasonal change. Obviously, it's going to mean that a lot of your typical, your typical, um, your conventional, I call them your conventional sellers, are going to retreat because uh, your conventional sellers don't look at winter as a uh, as a good period, as a good season to sell. They'll yep. wait for spring. Yep. Uh, so you've got you've got that mindset. Um, then you've got your your home vesting um, families now, which is basically. Uh, they'll be if they can't achieve the prices that uh, they believe that they want to achieve that they would like to achieve in order to downsize because as again uh, downsizing and trying to stay in the same area is very very difficult because of the lack of stock on market uh, and your retirees and your um, downsizers or your empty nesters don't want to basically that don't want to retire uh, 40 50 kilometers outside of where they grew up themselves yep. so what you're going to see is what we, I believe we're going to see, and there's going to be a lot more reports on, is the home vesting side of things, where these families are going to take on, um, you know, um, tenants, uh, carve up their uh, the bigger homes and create the, uh, you know, the basically your 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 teenager retreats and and put in a um, put in your, your gully style type of kitchenette with a with an electric stove and a microwave and and happy days and you'll. The, the way the rental market is going, they'll be getting you know anywhere between uh, two hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars a week uh, rent for these uh, the, these dwellings, and because that is what we are seeing, that is what and that is what the WeChat chatterers are doing with with complete homes, let alone when you've got uh, uh, when you've got a big home with a you know, with a with with, with um, uh, say you know uh, an elderly couple that uh, that can accommodate. Um, yeah, you know, one or two uh, more more people because the cost of living is rising. It, it's not getting cheaper, right? So it it, it helps them maintain the property uh, up until the time that they feel that they will get a uh, the kind of money that they need in order to retire um, successfully or retire to yeah you know, to a desirable place themselves. Mm-hmm. So so all I see, Martin, for the next three months is really uh, a retreat in numbers, and unfortunately. Although the numbers, the the home listing numbers are still, the freestanding home listing numbers are still, uh, uh, you know, in the mid sixes. Mm. Well, when when in twenty twenty one, you know, they were in the in the in the low uh, uh, fives or five thousand, um, and but the demand that is out there at the moment, uh, I think, is compensating for that uh, that one thousand uh, listing difference, and we're actually. It, it, for me, it's as though we were in the in the low fives already, and we're potentially going to walk into um, into greater chaos. And FIMO is going to go through the roof um, and you know, to the moon, if not to Mars. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's watch that. I think as we go forward, and of course, Melbourne is twenty um, seventh uh, of um, March. It was twenty five um, <clears throat> eight six three, and this week it's twenty four eight eight one. So they are uh, sliding <clears throat> a little bit. Um, and uh, um, you know, Queensland continues to well do pretty much similar things too. So we're almost wherever you look. Yeah. There's, there's consistent. The, the only there's consistent the difference with Melbourne, 
Cool. Uh, my, obviously, it's, uh, it's got the, the, the double the amount of numbers on, on, on market than in Sydney, as we've been saying for a while. Uh, but as I said earlier on, with uh, uh, Catherine Cashmore's reports, mm. is that uh, uh, they are getting a lot of a, a lot of people at the open for inspections, and, yep. and properties are being sold uh, at auction, and that's what she's reporting. However, the big difference uh, between Melbourne and Sydney is that um, Melbourne, the, the prices, uh, she also reports that um, they're not really they're not really moving up like they are in uh, in Sydney. If anything, they're still they are sliding back a bit. So um, I think we might have to um, draw the bow on this. But um, last thoughts before we close the conversation for the first international round. Last thoughts, Martin, is uh, yeah, you take care. You first first and foremost. Uh, we're looking forward to 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 future rants and uh, and people, but uh, uh, out there. Just, um, you know, just remember, as we've been saying for a long time, is um, the, yeah, not all the shines is gold. Uh, and, and people have got to be very, very careful as they, uh, as they look, look, you know, move, move forward in, in the, in the uh, property um, uh, purchasing uh, venture and, and ask for, uh, ask for more details than what the agents mm. are given. Yeah. You know? uh, wow. Find out who the builder was, where the build in the past and go and do a bit of a sneak peek of where they built and how they built to see, knock on the people's door and find out find out if they've had any issues there before you go out and, and buy into these new uh, new shiny buildings that are, that, that are out and about. Yeah, great advice. I think the new stuff is um, definitely worth uh, looking at very, very hard and very carefully because there's lots of stuff below the waterline. Edwin, I really appreciate your time today. And uh, once I get my broadband connected, which hopefully will be in the next week or so, uh, we'll be able to have um, a slightly more robust <laughs> connection. But anyway, I think we made it. So I uh, look forward to that. And uh, we'll try and do the same again uh, next week. It's um, Monday morning here. So I've got all day to edit this and get it up. So I'll do that uh, over the next few hours. And uh, we'll uh, give it another go next week. Looking forward to it, Martin. And stay, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh... Yeah, uh, uh, say hi to uh, Dusty and everyone to say hi to L Luna and Medial. Yeah, absolutely. They're snoring in the corner at the moment. They went out this morning in the rain and came back and said, ah, we like it inside. So they've now turned into inside dogs. But uh, there you go. That's the time of year. Take care. See you later. All the best, mate. Ciao.